Thanks for clicking on to Vogel's European Outlook for Friday the 14th of April. We've pretty much reached the middle portion of the month now and this is the 2 meter temperature normally is so far so slightly above average across the north of the UK. Cold in average, the bulk of England and Wales average. Elsewhere we've got a warmer than average Iberia, Central Europe below average as you can see here, Eastern Europe above average. In today's video, it's quite a big video today because I want to look at some of the long range stuff, looking at El Nino, La Nina. The correlation between these Enzo indexes, which are very, very important, um, you know, globally, but also across uh, Europe as well, with regards to the type of weather pattern we may or we, you know, we have had or may have later down the road here so i'm going to try and make this as straightforward as possible because this is very very important when it comes to the upcoming summer season rainfall distribution during the springtime can really shape a summer pattern you know more rain during the springtime can lead to a wetter cooler summer drier springs can sometimes lead to at least the first half of summer being a uh, warmer and drier because the soil content, the moisture content within the soils tends to have feedback to the atmosphere. So this is the two meter temperature normally for the month to date. And like I've said, I, I, I believe it was going to be a, a near average month. We may stray slightly warmer than average. We may stray slightly below average. I think we're likely to see more warmer than average as opposed to cooler. The reason why I think that is because uh, we are expecting a drier second half to the month versus what we've seen through the first half and sea surface temperatures are uh, firmly above average not just across the north atlantic and surrounding the uk and ireland but also across the board it's warmer than average a very big difference to what we've seen this was back in 2012 around early april the reason why I'm bringing 2012 up and the sea surface temperatures is because I am leaning something similar to what we've seen back in 2012. Now, granted, yeah, you can say that an alien is going to boost the global temperature. You know, we're going to see the increase in water vapor within the global atmosphere. So, therefore, the temperatures tend to be warmer overall. But... El Ninos don't necessarily just bring a warmer, drier theme during the summer months as well as the winter months, but it also can increase the chances of seeing wet conditions during the summer. And 2012 is a classic. Came off the back of a three-year La Nina, you know, at the very least two and a half, but maybe three years of a La Nina in the UK. That produced very dry period you know, for that three-year period, you know, 2000, the back end 2008, right the way through 2011, in the early 2012, we had a very, very dry period overall, very similar to what we've just seen. But, you know, once the El Nino finally kicked in during the late March, April, May period, it like flicked the switch and we turned weather. I had a barbecue summer, a massive bust in terms of the summer forecast for myself because I thought it was going to be a barbecue summer. And I believe the Met Office called for a barbecue summer that year as well. In fact, it was quite the opposite. It was a very, very wet summer. And I think it was, you know, between that and 2007 for the, some of the wettest summers on record for the British Isles. April rainfall distribution has been very interesting lately. Now, the, El, we are under an El Nino watch at the moment. So this is off climate.gov. This is off the NOAA site. And we have got an El Nino watch in place at the moment. And, of course, you can see why. We've got this strong warming now starting to show up off the South American coast. We've not seen that for three years, of course. Interesting enough, what we will see is we've got this little bit of a fight going on because what we've got is we've got a cold PDO. So the backdrop of a cold PDO with the developing El Nino is going to be quite interesting because this cold waters here, this colder than average uh, Pacific basin overall, which means the cold Pacific decadal oscillation, can sometimes fight against a developing El Nino. So it's going to be interesting to see over the next couple of months what takes place. 
with regards to the cold horseshoe over the North Pacific versus the warming taking place over the eastern portion of the Pacific Ocean. Do we see this strong uh, El Nino coming on like a lot of the models are indicating with the, the, the you know this warming that's taking place right up against Peru at the moment? That starts to exp expand westwards towards the date line. It's going to be interesting to see how quickly that takes place. And therefore, it's going to be interesting to see what developments take place with regards to the upcoming summer season, what impact this may have. Now, of course, there's always a lag. There's always a delay between ocean um, shifting in terms of the warm and cool versus the response to the atmosphere. So it's a very complicated uh, situation, and I am fighting with the ideas that I've got at the moment. At the moment, I'm leaning towards wetter, but not necessarily cooler in terms of the, the June through August period for the UK, Ireland, and indeed Europe overall. But I do believe that we will potentially see a, a, a wetter period, and it's been a while now since we've had a wet summer overall. We'll look at um, you know precipitation anomaly for the month of April for the UK in just a second here, but it's been a very dry stretch. I don't know exactly how... We stand in terms of rainfall this month. I don't know whether it's actually slightly above average for the first half of April or not, because we have had some pretty wet weather, and indeed we are seeing some fairly wet conditions at the moment. Look at these temperatures here for late afternoon. That was this morning, chilly enough, as you can see here. And this is the current temperatures here. So, of course, bearing in mind we've got plenty of sunshine at this time of the year, strong sun at that, and we're at quarter to five in the evening. Temperatures are fairly subdued across the UK, as you can see here, only 6s, 7s, 8s, 10s Celsius uh, across the bulk of England and Wales, um, slightly milder across the south of Ireland, as you can see here, cold across Northern Ireland and Scotland in that shower regime. And we've got plenty of showers, as you can see here, this is the current radar of, uh, of weather online. Uh, some fairly very wet conditions across the bulk of Wales and the Midlands up into the north of England, eastern England also slightly drier further south and further north. But we've got who had a hail shower just recently. There are very very heavy downpours at that because the reason why, of course, is we've got we've got cold air aloft. So these are the eight fifty temperatures. So chilly aloft, strong incoming solar radiation. You increase the lapse rate. So that's that upward motion of air. Strong warming versus the cold forces the earth to rise, cool, condense, produce showers. Hail is a very common factor at this time of year, of course, when you've got this setup taking place. Through the weekend, high pressure will build in, and then we're going to start to see things warming up. We are going to see a cool feed across the southern half of the UK early next week. So chilly on the east coast, warmer further west and indeed north. I think 20 Celsius is, is, is very possible for the uk uh, the northern half of the uk sorry so you can see here this is uh, probably hard to see but this is the conditions that you expect from an el nino or a la nina sorry a la nina you can see here that we do have uh, areas of cool and dry you've got uh, the june through august period uh, we've got a wet cool period across uh, you know the indian subcontinent southeast asia for example that has been the case over the last couple of years where we've seen a pretty decent monsoon and below average temperatures during the month and the summer months. Different story with the El Nino. We've got drier conditions, warmer conditions. Not good news, of course, for the Indian subcontinent and Southeast Asia. Where we've seen record break warm temperatures. Notice here that uh, there's no signal, according to the NOAA site anyway, for La Nina or El Nino, which is a bit frustrating because I think we do tend to see drier conditions with a La Nina, somewhat wetter conditions with an El Nino, and of course with the uh, uh, current sea surface temperatures warmer than average could go either way. So these warmer than average uh, sea surface temperatures could enhance the rain, or indeed it could enhance high pressure. So it's going to be a difficult call, but a very different sea surface temperature profile versus back in 2012. Warmer world, warmer oceans, warmer atmosphere. It's going to be difficult to say what happens. But you can see here, this is, of course, the Super El Nino that took place 2014-15. Then in the last three years, we've had a La Nina. 
And uh, if we look at the rainfall distribution here in particular, it is very, very interesting indeed. So this is April of 2022. Like I say, I don't know exactly where we stand this year, but certainly we are expecting wetter than average conditions, uh, you know, to be less uh, as we go through the second half of the month. So this is April 2022. Wetter than average across the far north of the UK, but the bulk of, of Scotland, England, Wales, and indeed Northern Ireland, it was a bit of a, uh, a, an east-west split over Northern Ireland, as you can see, but drier than normal as uh, was the theme as we went through last April. April 2021, across the board, very, very dry. April of 2020, very dry. April of 2019, very dry and you have to go back to april 2018 for the last time we had a wetter than average month so why are we seeing these very dry aprils my thinking is that it's firmly down to this the la nina taking place and then the summer has generally been on the warmer drier side than average but of course we had this Strong La Nina taking place, multi-year La Nina, 2008, 2009, 10 and 11, into early 2012. Then we've seen the La Nina kick in, or the El Nino kick in, sorry. And we, we then seen rainfall. Now, if we go back to the UK rainfall uh, 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 situation, you can see here 2017 was dry as well. 2016 was dry, uh, was wetter than average. That's quite interesting, isn't it? 2015 was drier than average. 2014 was 50 50, I suppose. Maybe leaning on the wet, uh, the, the dry side of average. 2013, so really, like even this is 2013, a uh, bulk of England and Wales drier than average. Uh, Scotland, particularly Western Scotland, was wetter than average. What's this telling us? That the 2010s into the early 2020s has been leaning drier than average. Why would that be the case? It's quite possible that it's down to this warm and sea surface temperatures over the North Atlantic Basin during this period of time. The point I'm trying to get to is that last time we seen a very wet April, was 2012, as you can see here. And what took place then was we seen the shift from a multi-year La Nina into an El Nino. And this is why I think we could be going towards a wetter summer this upcoming year versus 2000, uh, you know, versus the, the, you know, the, the last several years where it's been warmer and drier and record warm and we've seen all sorts of crazy things going on. Maybe wrong with this, and maybe I'm too quick with the change to a wetter summer, but we're long overdue that. With the onset of the El Nino, it's going to be interesting to see what happens anyway. I hope this video has made sense to you. This is all about the building of the ideas. This is me explaining the ideas that I'm developing in my head and going to be producing towards the end of May. So, uh, you know, I hope you've enjoyed the content. Please like, share and subscribe. Lots of things going on at the moment here. I try to provide unique weather content that you don't see elsewhere. So I do appreciate your view, your comment. I do read them. I don't necessarily reply to them, but uh, they are read and appreciated. So um, keep them coming in anyway. So stay tuned. I'll uh, probably not have a video tomorrow, but I will have the Global Weather and Climate Report on Sunday. Lots of interesting stuff going on with regards to the global weather pattern. So stay tuned for that on Sunday. It's going to be an epic video. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your Friday. Bye for now.